The next type of factoring we're going to discuss is factoring the difference of two squares. Okay, we call that dots. So first of all, when you think about difference, right? Difference means to subtract. So if you look at both of the examples here, like number one and number four, you'll see we have subtraction. Okay, we're taking the difference of two squares. And when I say that, I mean perfect squares. So anything that has a square root. So here, if you look at x squared, that's a perfect square. The square root of x squared is x because x times x gives you x squared. Here, 64 is also a perfect square. Okay, the square root of 64 is 8, because 8 times 8 gives you 64. So dots are really easy to factor. I mean, if you, as long as you have a difference of two squares, all you do is you set up two sets of parentheses, and you would take the square root of whatever's in the first spot and put that in the first spot within each parenthesis. So again, the square root of x squared is x. We're going to have one addition sign, and one subtraction sign. Doesn't matter where you put the addition and subtraction as long as you have one of each. And then we take the square root of 64, take the square root of what's in the second spot in your expression and put it in the second spot in each parenthesis. This right here is x squared minus 64 in factored form. If you wanted to check, it's um, really easy to check this. All you have to do is just multiply out your answer, just double distribute. So x times x is x squared x times negative 8 is negative 8x, positive 8 times x is positive 8x, and 8 times negative 8 is negative 64. And what's going to happen is these two middle terms are going to cancel, and we will be left with the original question. So that checks out for us. Okay, let's try out number 4. So with number 4, we have a difference, and this right here is a perfect square, and this right here is a perfect square. Awesome, so let's just set up our two sets of parentheses. And the square root of 49 is 7, and the square root of a squared is a. So 7a would be the square root of this whole expression. So let's put a 7a in the first spot in each of these parentheses. Okay, then we said we want to make one addition and one subtraction. And the square root of 4b squared is just 2b. So we'll put a 2b in the second spot in each of those, and... That's it. That's done for us. Okay, so now if you could flip to number 13. I mean, what you'll notice when you first look at this is this is not, although it is a difference, right? We have our subtraction sign. This is not a perfect square, and this is not a perfect square. So this isn't a difference of perfect squares. But, you know, with any type of factoring problem, the first thing you want to do, if you can, is you want to factor out a greatest common factor. So if you look at both of these two terms, you could factor out a 5 as well as a y. So let's do that. Let's factor out a 5, y. And when we do, that'll leave us with y to the 6th minus 25. Okay, now, if we look in our parentheses here, let's see if this is a difference of perfect squares. Well, we have a difference. And 25 is definitely a perfect square, right? Square root of 25 is 5. Now, y to the 6, let's see, is that a perfect square? Is there something times itself that gives us y to the 6? Well, as long as this is an even exponent, then the answer to that is yes. Because if you recall, when you're multiplying two terms with the same base, what we want to do is we want to add the exponents. So if we have y to the 3rd times y to the 3rd, that'll give us y to the 6. So what that means, then, is the square root of y to the 6 is y cubed, y to the third. All right, so this is a difference of perfect squares. So let's keep going with this. So I'm going to first bring down my 5y because I don't want to forget about that, okay? Um, that's one of our factors. Or actually, technically, 5 is a factor and y is a factor. So technically, that's two of our factors. Um, but let's take the y to the 6 minus 25 and open up two sets of parentheses. So again, we said the square root of y to the 6th is y to the third. So let's put that in the first spot in each of those two parentheses. And then we'll make one addition and one subtraction. And since the square root of 25 is 5, we could put a 5 in the second spot within each parenthesis. Now, you know, it's really important to always check if you can factor further. So, you know, whenever you have um, two terms and you see a difference, you just want to check and say, well, are these perfect squares? Because if they are, I can factor further. In this case, they're not, so I'm just going to circle my answer. And that's that. All right, and then finally we're going to look at number 15. Now, when we look at number 15, you may notice, look, this is a difference, and this is a perfect square, and 324 is also a perfect square. So if you want to jump right into factoring, 
the difference of perfect squares, you can. But I find it a little easier. If a greatest common factor can be factored out, I like to factor it out from the beginning because if you don't do it in the beginning, you then have to do it later on. And, you know, usually if you want to remember to do it, doing it in the beginning, just getting it out of the way right in the, you know, right from the get-go makes it so you won't forget it. All right, so if you look at both of those two terms, you could say, well, what can I take out of both those two terms? Really, the only thing I could take out is just a 4. So if I take out a 4, it's going to leave me with x to the 4th minus 81. Now, if we look at both of these two terms, these are both perfect squares. So I'm going to take this, and since it's a difference, I'm going to factor it further. We'll bring down the 4, and I'm going to open up two sets of parentheses. All right, so the square root of x to the 4th is x squared. So let's put that in the first spot within each parenthesis. We make one addition, one subtraction, and the square root of 81 is 9. So let's put that in the second spot in each parenthesis. Okay, so now if you recall in the last one we said you always want to look to see if you fact to see if you could factor further. And in this case, we can. This right here again is another difference of perfect squares. So let's bring down the 4. Let's bring down the x squared plus 9. And I just want to point out that this is not a difference of perfect squares because of the addition sign here. Okay, difference means we need a subtraction. But this is a difference of perfect squares. So we're going to open up two sets of parentheses. And since the square root of x squared is x, let's put that in the first spot. We want one addition and one subtraction. And since the square root of 9 is 3, we'll put that in the second spot. And from this point, you can look forward and you can say, well, I'm done factoring because the only difference I have, this is not a perfect square. So this would be my answer.